As long as you know what you're taking on. If you can sleep with a man you hate, and he can't see that, what am I to make of this? I'm a lost soul, Neil. What else do you need? He's lost and confused and, and uh, grief-stricken and uh, without a friend in the world. And uh, the only person who begins to believe in him is the uh, Pakistani manager of, of a minicab office because he nicks a car and, and, and he gets a job as a minicab driver. Take a seat, pal. I'll see who's free. I don't want a car, mate. A job. A job? You're not driving. Rough neighbourhood. Yeah. I swear. Later on, two kids come in to rob the place. And uh, he goes, I'll get you a cab. And they go, we're not looking for a cab. He goes, ah, oh, you're looking for a job. And they go, no, oh, we want the money, you see. We had two actors and we had two standing guys. And it's two stuntmen. And the two actors, the young kids, they said they'd do it. And they were really, really good. Go on, Spanish, hit him! Come on, Spanish! And then we were banging this fridge door against his head. It looked really good. I hope when the audience sees it at the start, they'll say, ah, oh, this is the movie where he jumps off the train, he's innocent, he's going to clear his name, and then gradually you creep in, did he or didn't he? And uh, I hope that's the thing that will keep people hooked, because it's not as, as cut and dried as a simple fugitive sort of story, you know. Put a lot of killers away now. And they've looked me in the eye, just like you're doing now. And they believed they hadn't done it. They lied for so long that they began to believe the lie. And two of them committed crimes. So horrific. Such appalling acts of butchery like yours. They genuinely and honestly could not remember doing it. Uh, he's not sure, thanks to a conversation he has with a detective who arrested him, whether he did it or not. Because the detective says to him, listen, mate, I believe you did it. I'm a straight copper, and it's just such a horrific act. And I've seen this in murderers before, that your, your brain has wiped it out. So we don't know, and he doesn't know. You can't heal it all with kisses. It was really horrendous what he saw. Um, and um, being covered in your own wife's blood is not a good experience. He goes on some sort of journey where he's, he, 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 at first he's trying to shut out these memories and then they overtake him for a while and then he actually begins, as he begins to grieve, he then remembers it how it was. It's very sweet. They're different from the rest of the show in that they're handheld, whereas everything else is very controlled and generally on tracks and things like that, whereas the flashbacks are handheld, giving a... Um, uh, more of a sort of a memory feel to them. All our flashbacks. We're doing on the long end of the zoom on 110 mil, wide open generally, and I'm pulling my own focus, and it's all handheld. And we just do it. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, well, we do it so many times, there's going to be bits that do work. But it's like, if it's out of focus, it doesn't matter so much, because it's meant to be a flashback. It could be a home movie camera or something. It's a bit sort of, I don't know. It's a bit sort of like avant-garde, I suppose. Unfortunately, the rest of the afternoon, the rest of the day is flashback, so I've got to work hard. I've had a drink this afternoon at lunchtime, so it'll be a bit 
Very baby Betty, you never know. A bit more fluid. I think it's gone extremely well. I mean, it's a really difficult one in that we've had such a big cast, uh, such a demanding schedule, and quite a lot of stunt work. I mean, I, again, have to be careful about giving away too much, but uh, we've been throwing people off of high-speed trains and shooting people and having some fairly physical fights. And with the stunt coordinator, of course, is Terry Forrestal, who's not with us today, but... He's absolutely top man in his field, so he's made it seem quite easy, but they're hard days to do. Standing in the middle of the countryside in the pouring rain in the middle of night with a train running up and down the lines and somebody jumping off it. It's about four seconds on the screen, but it takes most of a day to set up, uh, weeks beforehand, of course, and all of the night to do. For television, you know, it's a big, big pretty big setup. You know, it's a very ambitious project in that sense. I think that in terms of British television, this has more action and more stunts. Uh, than almost anything I've ever seen. This is right at the top of the tree, the top people are working on it, and the product is very good. We're trying to work for a sort of cinematic thing, but I mean, I don't see why everything shouldn't be cinematic. I mean, I've always been told it's cinematic, and it's just like a movie, but I mean, why shouldn't it be just like a movie? We're working for television, they show movies just as much as the movies do. I mean, it's, uh, it's got a great feel to it, it's a very slick, stylish sort of feel to this. To the production. Some very interesting people working on it, Some very talented people working on it. Or we're giving it a really interesting look, really quite an unusual look for television, I think. Sort of seamless sort of filming quality. The toughest sort of days that we had um, in, in terms of logistics really was working at Manchester Airport. As you know, working in an airport is tough enough, but when people are running around with guns in their hands in a place like an airport, not funny. Not easy to organise, and the guys who put it together did a really good job. But um, airports and guns aren't the sort of thing that you ordinarily would match, particularly as we had to shoot one chap with a high velocity rifle. But perhaps I shouldn't say any more about that, we don't want to give the game away. This is time.